Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Osman. Welcome back to House of Games. It is Tuesday. We've got a very competitive week. We've got some very good quizzes this week. One of them is going to walk away with a trophy. Who's it going to be? It'll be one of these four people. Could it be Andy Hamilton, <laughs> Sabrina Grant, <laughs> Kirsty Walk, or Matt Edmondson? Welcome, everybody. Matt Edmondson, a win yesterday. A very strong start, a very strong finish. I know. I feel relieved. I can relax for the rest of the week now. The big thing is, if you win Monday and Tuesday, it, things get very tense mm. with the rest of the panel. I mean, it's you know, it happens. I think it's unlikely. Oh, God, we'll what see. is I mean, what is we'll this, Kirsty? False modesty. What is yeah. this? OK, I think You're it's very likely. You're the kid in the block. <laughs> Kirsty, now, we're in Glasgow. OK, you're the home favourite. And a good first day for you as well? A good first day, but I would have liked to get the robe. Oh, yeah, which... But presumably there is an endless supply of robes. Uh, do you know there isn't an endless <gasps> supply of robes? Well, otherwise they wouldn't be so special. So special. And exclusive. Sabrina, talking of prizes, yeah. so we take a little look at today's. Yep. Whoever wins today takes mm. home one of these. There's the House of Games dartboard, there's the duvet and pillow set, the salt and pepper shakers, there's the cool bag and the cufflinks. Now, you started as a fashion expert, really a stylist, and you still do a lot of fashion yeah. things. Uh, what are we thinking about those lovely cufflinks? We cufflinks, like the cufflinks are very cute. Yeah. Very, very sweet and, you know, gives a little pop of detail to an outfit. This is good. This is but tough, isn't it? But I'd yes. go for the pillow. Uh, pillow and duvet. And duvet. Even better. Oh, for no, one. Yeah. Pillow and duvet. Perfect. Cozy. Yeah. It's the voice of style, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, style. I know. And yeah. from one voice of style to another. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andy, let's take a little look at the weekly leaderboard, shall we? Now, Matt is atop it, but you had a very close second. And we had a great answer smash as well. Do you think you got a prize in you this week? I'd be very surprised. <laughs> it wouldn't be shocking. There's only four of you here. It would be shocking, but I think okay. that's, you know, that's a target I can easily hit, I think. He's just called you a target he can easily hit. <laughs> yeah. Just, just so no, you know. No, worst I meant, no, I meant not winning. Oh, not game. winning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really that, easy. No, I set the bar low yeah, yeah. in then, life. That's the then, secret of happiness. And then consistently miss it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Listen, great day yesterday. OK, four good quizzes here. Shall we do it again? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Every time I press this buzzer, a new round comes up. I never know what it's going to be. You never know what it's going to be. Our first round today is... Sorry, wrong number. OK, fingers on buzzers, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a series of questions. All of them have numbers in their answer. But before you buzz in and give me the answer, I need you to do this. Subtract seven <laughs> from any number you find in the answer. So here is your first question. 2001 film starring George Clooney as a thief who puts together a team for a casino heist. Yes, Matt. It's Ocean's Six. It's Ocean Six? It is not oh, on phrase, oh. Andy. Is it Ocean's Four? Is it Ocean's Four? It is Ocean's oh, Four, yeah. Oh, four. And that's quite a sneaky question for the yeah. first yeah, one, because is. there's a number of those films. Yeah, 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 Ocean's Eleven becomes Ocean's Four. Well played, Andy Hamilton. Next question. Subtract seven from this answer, please. Fictional anti-corruption police unit in the TV drama Line of Duty. Yes, Matt. AC5. AC5? AC12 becomes AC5. Okay, Matt. Subtract seven from this, please. Novel by David Nichols about a university challenge contestant. Yes, Kirsty, <laughs> with, with some force. <laughs> Frightening Sabrina, I might say. But I've got it wrong. Uh-oh. I think it's one day minus seven is minus six. Minus six days? Yeah. It's incorrect, I'm afraid. The wrong book. Andy. Uh, starter for three. Starter for three. Starter for ten becomes starter for three. Well done. Andy, he did the naughty thing, David Nichols, of writing more than one book with a number in its title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How dare he. Now, let's forget about subtracting seven. Uh, and instead, I'd be very grateful if you could multiply by five. Oh, goodness. Okay, ah. For these ones. Here's your first one. Group who had UK number one hits in the 1970s with I'm Not In Love and Dreadlock Holiday. Andy. 50cc. Yeah, well done. 10cc multiplied by 5 becomes 50cc. Next question, multiply by 5. Sitcom set at the BBC starring Hugh Bonneville and Jessica Hines. Yes, Andy. W55. 
W fifty-five. Oh no, no, sorry, W one A. Incorrect. No, I'm afraid. W, Matt. Yeah. W five A. W five A. Absolutely. Ah. There it is. Beating myself up big time. <laughs> w one A becomes W five A. Multiply this by five, please. Chemical formula for water. Yes, Kirsty. H ten O. H ten O. Well played, Kirsty Walk. Nicely done. Uh, forget about multiplying by five, and instead, add 21 to these answers, please. The answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes, Andy. 63. 63, absolutely. 42. Yeah. Add 21 becomes 63. Here is your next question. What is the title? Of this song. And they said that when we grew up, we get married. Yes, Matt. Year 3021. Not, I'm afraid. You're thinking of year 3000. I was thinking busted. by busted, which obviously yeah. it isn't. Anyone want to hear a bit more of it? Yeah. Oh, we never did it. Although I often. Oh, Kirsty. 42. It's not, I'm afraid. It's pulp. Yeah. That helps. Should I tell you the name of the song? Yeah. You're not then allowed to buzz in, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. That, I think it'll be a bit unfair on the other thing. Yeah. Uh, it's Disco 2000 uh, by yeah. Pulp. So you're not a million miles away, Matt. Unlucky. No. And it would have been Disco 2021. I'm sure no one at Radio 1 will take the mick out of you. I'm sure they won't. Yeah. For mixing up Pulp and Busted. I know. Final question in this round. <laughs> Add 21 to this, please. Jerome K. Jerome's light-hearted novel from 1889 about his journey on the Thames with some friends. That is Andy Hamilton. 24 men in a boat. 24 yes. men in yes. a boat. Mm. Absolutely. Three men in a boat. 24 men in a boat. That's the end of that round. Good round for Andy Hamilton, I think. Ooh. Let's take a look at our scores, shall we? Matt started very strongly last time, and Andy has returned the favour this time, I think. Sabrina yet to get off the mark. Kirsty, you have one. Matt Edmondson has two. Andy Hamilton, our early leader, with five points. Well played, Andy. <laughs> Shall we play another round? Yeah. Always a pairs round, round two. And today the pairs round is... You spell terrible. Player in last place gets to choose their partner. Sabrina, today that is you. Who would you like to play with okay. today? <laughs> I need to pick strategically. Mm. I'm going to go Kirsty. You're going to go Kirsty? Yeah. Lovely. OK, so Great. Sabrina and Matt, if you will swap places, please. Matt, welcome down to the welcome. south end of the studio. Welcome it's beautiful Matt. over here. Very nice. Yes. Matt and Andy. I'm excited to be part of that with Andy. I know, right? Yeah. What a treat. Um, now, what happens in this round, I'll ask you a series of questions. If you know the answer, buzz in, tell me the answer. If you get it correct, I will then ask your partner to spell that answer. <laughs> and you only get a point if you spell it correctly. OK, here's your first question. Fingers on buzzers, everybody. Which type of Italian coffee with a name derived from the hoods worn by an order of Franciscan friars consists of espresso topped with steam milk foam? Yes, Andy. Oh, no, Andy. What have you done? They get so excited to buzz in because <laughs> you know you don't have to spell it. Cappuccino. Cappuccino is the correct answer. Matt, for the point, can you spell cappuccino? I don't know that I can. No. C. A. P. P. A. Oh. oh. Everyone at home was... That's where everyone stopped after the double yes. piece. Oh, I would have said. Oh, well, let's you. take a look. Oh, you! Oh, yeah, no. You then C. E. I'd have gone double C. Yes. Oh, double C. I wouldn't have gone double C. I'd have yeah. gone for the double C. Oh, yeah, oh I, I shouldn't have said you. That's very frustrating. I would have gone CH at the end there, definitely. There's so many ways to spell that wrong. Here is your next question. What is the first name of the character in Spectre Morse created by Colin Dexter? Yes, Andy. Endeavour. Endeavour is the right answer, Andy. Matt, for the point, can you spell the word endeavour? E-N-D-E-A. Oh, hello. V. Fancies this. O. Does it have a U or not? Um, mm. I think it does. I'm going to go for a U. U? R. Oh, okay. well played, well Matt played. Evanson. Endeavour. Nicely done. Point to you and Andy. Next question. 
The orchestral march is composed by Edward Elgar between 1901 and 1930, known collectively as Pomp and What? Yes, Kirsty. Circumstance. Circumstance is the correct answer. Sabrina, the good news is, to get a point, you have to spell circumstance. Mm -hmm. C-I-R... Actually, when you say it slowly, know, that's when oh, your yeah. mind starts yeah, exactly. to play tricks. C-U-M-S-T-A-N... C E. Oh, well played, Sabrina. Nicely done. <laughs> it is genuine. I find myself holding my breath during the. Uh, <laughs> the you spell terrible rounds. Yeah, <laughs> nicely done. Point to Kirsty and Sabrina. Next question. Which word can mean a vivid purplish red colour or a genus of flowering plants named in honour of a 16th century German botanist? Kirsty. I think it's vermilion. Is it vermilion? It's not, I'm afraid. I think it's even harder to spell than vermilion. And I knew oh. how to spell that, Kirsty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you can say that, can't you? Mm. Very easy. To say. It's not. I'd never have got it in vermilion years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it had to say it out loud. I've got a pun for the next one as well. Okay. For what I think it is. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. No one? I'll start my pun. It would be a film starring Michael J. Fox. Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Back to the uh, future. I think it's future. Oh. Which is what would that be? F U C H S S I E. There we go. Oh. See the points we would have got. Yeah. yeah. Unimaginable bounty. Sabrina sitting here and they go, I would have spelt that, I could have spelt that. That's so annoying. That's a great colour as well. Uh, final question in this round. Fingers on buzzers, please. Hamlet's monologue to be or not to be is an example of what dramatic device in which a character speaks aloud to themselves. Yes, Kirsty. Uh oh. Uh oh. Soliloquy. Yeah, I think it is. Isn't oh, it? you. Correct. Sorry. <laughs> Sabrina, it's no, it's no vermilion, I'm afraid. Can you spell? I mean, listen, we're all wishing oh. you luck at home. Soliloquy. I love a bit of Shakespeare. Oh, okay. S O L. I'm going to say I. Absolutely. L O. Q now. Q? U's always after a Q. Ah, uh, it could be an I and it could be an E. Ah, oh, so I. I. I've done it. Oh. What is it? Is it just straight Y? Oh, oh, I would have got it wrong. Y. I would have got it wrong. How but I knew it was something... an E at the end. Uh, that the doesn't thing... look right. Who's no, it doesn't. No, it's one of you those. You can't end a word Q U Y. <laughs> what on earth is going on, Andy? It's one of those that always looks wrong written down. You got so far through that word as well. Unlucky, yeah, Sabrina. Do. That's Unlucky. the end of that round. Sabrina and Matt, if you'll swap back places, please. Well played in that round, everyone. Thanks. Welcome. Good back. Stuff going on. What <laughs> colour are we calling our chairs, Sabrina? Um, red. Just red, red. right? Just plain red. <laughs> um, let's take a look at our scores. Two rounds down on Tuesday's House of Games. Sabrina off the mark with one. Kirsty, you've got two. Matt, three. Andy Hamilton, three-point lead on six. Well played, Andy. Let's move straight on to our next round, which is... Win when they're singing. Now, I have to say, of all the times you've done this, the person who has easily been the best has been Scott Mills. This is a DJ's mm -hmm. game, Matt. What we'll do, we're going to play the first few bars of a famous intro to a song, OK? We will then fade it out, keep listening in your head, and then as soon as you think the first word is sung, press your buzzer, OK? <laughs> and whoever presses closest to the first word being sung gets a point. At home, you know, we always play along, so get your stopwatches out and your phone or whatever you need to do, um, and uh, stop it when you think the first word is sung, OK? Everyone ready here? Everyone ready at home? Start your stopwatches now. <laughs> at home. So uh, I think Kirsty cracked first there. Let's take a look at your <laughs> times. Staying alive by the Bee Gees, of course. Kirsty 14 up to Sabrina on 16. What have you got at home? Shall we have a little listen and see who's closest, see who's won the first point? Well, you <gasps> 
Kirsty, oh. well done. Nice and played. 12.99, the Bee Gees staying alive. Shall we do another one? See if it's another Bee Gees, shall we? I suspect it's not. At home, start your stopwatches now. Uh, <laughs> I could another feel few I was out of rhythm then. <laughs> I love the fact that Matt went in immediately, so everyone just thought, I think we should probably go yeah. where Matt went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was, of course, oh. Overload oh. by the Sugar Babes. Oh, uh, Kirsty was yeah. in first there. <laughs> oh, I thought Matt went in first. Oh. Very, very close, though. And he just went as soon as the others had gone, I presume. To be honest, yeah. What have you got at home on this one? Let's take a look, shall we? Or take a listen and see who's won themselves a point. Oh, well, I mean... Andy, you're such a Sugar Boobs fan. Fast change, baby. Oh, oh, my God. 15 points, oh. it's eight. Well done. <laughs> that at home. Andy, so far this week, <laughs> on, on Sugar Babes questions, <laughs> you are 100%. Yeah, I was, I was very quietly confident there. Yeah. Should we do another one? Yeah. yeah. OK, yeah, final yeah, one in this round. Have, you're amazing at these, <laughs> yeah. it turns out. Start your stopwatches now. I went very early. I realised I should go. It went too early. Kirsty went very early, but if she comes in straight away, is that Orinoco right. Flow by mm, yeah. Enya? Let's take a look at the timings. So Kirsty very early. Everyone else very close to each other. What have you got at home on this one? Should we take a little listen to see who's got the that, final no. point of the round? Kirsty looks confident. No, I don't. <laughs> It does go around one more time. It does. Oh. That is Sabrina. Well played, Sabrina. 16.19. Yeah. Nicely done. Very close between you and Matt there. Very well done at home if you were closer than that as well. 16.19 seconds. That is the end of that round. The end of Win When They're Singing. See what it's done to our leaderboard. Andy Hamilton's Sugar Babes knowledge paying off once again. <laughs> Sabrina, you have two. Kirsty and Matt, three points each. It's a four-point lead now for Andy Hamilton. With two rounds to go. Come on, Andy! <laughs> bemused and befuddled. Yeah. Yeah, pretending, well, I didn't. This is the last thing I expected. <laughs> I, did. I barely know where I am. Anyway, more Sugar Babes. Um, two more rounds to go. Here's your next round. It is... Where is Kazakhstan? Tablets out, please. I'm going to show you a map. And today, your map is Europe. I'm going to ask you to place your cross on a series of things, please. And whoever is closest gets a point. I wonder if you can find me the filming location for the holiday in the film Shirley Valentine. So where is that? <sighs> so you found a Shirley Valentine? You know where that is? Well, you know where it's set, and then do you know where that is? That's the question here. What's your mindset here, Matt? I've gone for the coast. Don't, no, don't, don't say yet. Mm, just in case. Sorry. sorry. I, I haven't come, gone for I've the coast. To, just while everyone else was thinking, I just thought I'd, yeah. you know, yeah. just waiting for Sabrina no to lock in. Andy, do you know the answer? Well, it was quite hard getting that, because I think it's one of the Greek islands. Mm. So I've gone one of the Greek islands. OK, let's take a look at where um, Andy is. Yeah. Sabrina, where have you gone? Now Andy said that, I'm having, like, flashbacks of the film. Yeah. Because you meet someone, but I, I said she's gone to Italy. Italy, OK. Let's take a look where you are. East coast of Italy there, Kirsty. Did you know this one? I followed Andy to a Greek island. Nice, not for the first time. <laughs> How did that get out? <laughs> Let's take a look at where you are. Yeah, kind of on the mainland -y Greece as well, and by the islands. And Matt, so you were thinking... I wasn't really. Yeah. Frustratingly, I'd gone with Sabrina, and I went sort of Amalfi Coast, Italy. <laughs> Why is that frustrating? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you can't remember where the movie <laughs> is. A bit rude. 
very yeah, rude. You've totally admitted you don't Uncle know where it yeah. is. To, to be fair to Matt, you did say, I didn't know where it was set, and no, I think I've gone wrong. I so know. I see his point. <laughs> uh, so the toe of Italy. Now, it's in Mykonos, uh -huh. Greece. Let's take a look at where that is and who scored the point. It could be very close. Well, Andy, you are absolutely bang on. I'm, t I'm tempted to give Kirsty a point as well. She's pretty close. She's pretty close, isn't she? What it? do you think? No? It's, yeah, I think so, because yeah. it's quite yeah, hard. Yeah. Like, um, a point. Uh, yeah. A point to Andy and a point to Kirsty. Very well done. Point to you at home as well, you were close to that. Mykonos. Uh, the next thing I'd like you to find... The headquarters of the European Central Bank. Hmm. I like going to the European Central Bank. I like the little pens on chains. Waters. Hmm. What do you think at home on this one, European Central Bank? OK, everyone is in. Sabrina, what were you thinking on this one? I think it's actually in London. Do you think? Yeah. They probably would have moved it a couple of years ago if it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about this. <laughs> Let's take a look. Where has Sabrina <laughs> gone? Yeah, kind of London. Kirsty, now you must have interviewed... I'm going to get pelters if I've got this. I, I think... I'm hoping I put my cross in Belgium because I think it's still in Brussels. It's still in Brussels. Okay, let's take a look at Kirsty. Yeah, that's Belgium, pretty much all of Belgium. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Little, little bit, little Banging into the Netherlands. Yeah, exactly. Banging into Luxembourg. Uh, Matt, do you have any idea with this one? I was and trying that... to find Belgium and I think I got close. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Belgium, kind of Netherlands border. Andy, what did you think on this one? I thought it might be in Frankfurt in <gasps> Germany, but then my, my worry was where is Frankfurt? Yeah. So I've gone Germany. So you're in Germany, there you go, middle of Germany. So, listen, those are the big financial centres, Brussels, London, Frankfurt. It is in one of those. Let's find out. Oh God, Where is, is the European Central Bank? It's ah. in Frankfurt. Oh, he's close. I think you are closest there, Andy. And I think, as Kirsty, this time round, I know you're fairly close. I thought I was in the wrong place. I'll just give a point to Andy. So, Andy, and well done, it's in Frankfurt. So there you go, final one in this round. Can you find the original Legoland resort? <laughs> Where's the original Legoland oh. resort? Interesting. What do you think at home on this? You won't get in as much trouble, Kirsty, if you don't get this one. OK, everybody is in. What do you think at home? We've got an answer for this one. Kirsty, we'll start with you. Where did you th think the original Legoland was? It's in Denmark. Was? Denmark. Interesting. I think, but I might be wrong. Let's take a look at... I hope I've went. got Denmark in the right place, that's absolutely. the problem. Absolutely. Denmark, absolutely right. Matt, what were you thinking? Well, the only one I've heard of is Windsor. OK. So I've tried to get close to there. OK, you've gone Windsor. Let's take a look. Yeah, kind of a bit far north, but uh, listen, you're certainly in England. Yes. <laughs> give you that. Andy, what were you thinking? Uh, I've gone Denmark and I think I've put my cross pretty much where Kirsty's put hers. Okay. See where Andy is? Yeah. Yep, same place. That mm. bodes well, doesn't it? Uh, Sabrina, where are you going? I try to aim for Windsor as well. Are you just sticking in the UK for your... Uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I remember going. I remember it being a big thing yeah. when Legoland opened, but was it the original one? One, yeah. I mean, judging by how confident these two are, one suspects not. Let's take a look at where Sabrina is. Sort of northwest Walesy Walesy type yeah. area. But listen, it's Big. the UK. The answer is... Somewhere in Scandinavia. Oh, we've got the wrong bit. Oh, Let's just... find out where. Denmark. Very well done. A point to Kirsty and to Andy there. You're both very, very close. Nicely played. That is the end of that round. We only have Answer Smash to oh, go. Yeah. On Monday, our champion was Matt Edmondson. Let's take a look at our final leaderboard before Answer Smash. It is looking rather good for well, the gentleman to my left, Andy Hamilton. Ooh. Five-point lead wow. going into Answer Smash. <laughs> he looks delighted about it as well, doesn't he? <laughs> Let's play our final round, shall we? It is, of course... Answer Smash. Fingers on buzzers, everyone. A point for a correct answer, a point off for an incorrect answer, which means that a five-point lead mm. can be overturned. It's been done before. So let's play our first category, which is... Breakfast foods. Those will be the pictures. There'll be a clue above. Smash them into each other. Here's your first one. Who starred as the main character Geraldine in the BBC sitcom The Vicar of Dibley? Yes, Matt. Oh. Dawn French Toast. 
<laughs> it is absolutely <laughs> John French, French taste. Next question. In the comedy chat show set at number 42, Sanjeev Bhaskar and Mira Sayal played characters with what surname? Yes, Matt. Coo Marmalade. Coo Marmalade. <laughs> it's right. Well done. He's coming at you. Next one. Which actor played Tim in the TV series Spaced and the title role in the 2004 film Shaun of the Dead? Yes, Andy. Simon Peggs Benedict. Simon Peggs Benedict. <laughs> very well done. Yeah, very good. Okay. <laughs> Next category. British landmarks. Those will be the pictures. Which character in the American TV series Breaking Bad was played by Brian Cranston? Yes, Matt. Walter Whitecliffs of Dover. Walter Whitecliffs of Dover. Well played, Matt. <laughs> Next one. Who played Dorothy Zbornak in the US sitcom The Golden Girls? No one. You must recognise the landmark, do you, Kirsty? And B. Arthur's seat. B. Arthur's seat is the right. B. Arthur and Arthur's wow. seat. Oh, well played, Andy. Next clue, next landmark. Which 1974 Elton John hit was written as a tribute to Marilyn Monroe? Andy. Candle in the Windsor Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Candle in the Windsor Castle? Absolutely right. Next category. Oh. Well, once again, Andy and Matt sharing the points in that final round. I mean, listen, you had a five-point lead going into it. Got a few answers there, didn't throw anything away. Matt, you're our winner on Monday, but our winner on Tuesday with a very big score, Andy Hamilton. Well played, Andy. Well played. Very nicely played. Scored as many points as everyone else put together there. 13 all. All right. Um, Andy, well done. Thank yeah. you very so much. So a win, a win under your belt, and yes. you get to choose a prize. Okay. Which, which <laughs> you, sound, you sound delighted. Sorry. <laughs> Which of these no, would I meant you like? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, says, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll have the dartboard. Ah, lovely. Andy Hamilton takes home a House of Games dartboard. Well played, Andy. And let's take a look at our leaderboard for the week. Sabrina, you have two. Kirsty, you've got four. We have joint leaders. Andy and Matt, seven points each. Andy, very exciting stuff. That final round as well, it's all been these two, hasn't it, yeah. so far? Yeah, it's the answer smash. I just, it's just not fast. But as the week goes on, the brain gets into it. Thank you so much once again. Another great day's quizzing. Let's do it again, shall we, tomorrow? We'll see you all here, same time, same place. We'll see you as well, same time, same place, on the House of Games. <laughs>